Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. This is unit one, limits and continuity. And today's topic is topic 1.11, defining continuity at a point. Enjoy. All right, for lesson 1.11, defining continuity at a point, we're going to start with our formal definition of continuity. Um, remember in the last lesson, we referred to uh, what was called the informal definition which if I uh, want to remind you, the informal definition of continuity was this idea of like, can I draw the function without lifting my pencil? If you can draw it without lifting your pencil, then we would say it's continuous. If you have to lift up your pencil along the way, we would refer to it as di discontinuous. Now, this is not a very mathematical uh, way of describing a function. And so because of that, you know, we wanted to come up uh, with a better idea and a more mathematical way of defining uh, what continuity is. And so we have this formal definition of continuity, which is a big part of this chapter. Um, and let's talk about it. It says that for f of x to be continuous at a given x value, so at x equals c, the three following conditions must be met. So key piece that all three of these following conditions have to be met if we're going to refer to a function as being continuous at a particular point. The first one is uh, what we're going to say is that f of c exists. f of c exists. And what we mean by that is that at some uh, value x equals c, there is a point there. So there's a point on the function. It should be filled in at x equals c, right? So f of c has to exist. If there's no point there, there's no way that the function is going to be continuous. Our second uh, part of the definition of continuity is we want to say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x also exists. In this case, we don't really care what it is. We just want to know that from the left, so from the left and the right, the function is going to the same spot. It's going to the same y value. So that's going to be really important if the function is going to be continuous, that the left side and the right side of the graph need to be converging on the same exact spot. Our third uh, thing for continuity, our third part of the definition of continuity, is that not only do these two things here have to exist, but they have to equal each other. And so what we say here is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x not only does it exist from number two, but it's going to actually just be equal to whatever f of c is. And so the first two are do they exist, and the third one is are those two things equal to each other. Um, all three of these things must be, must be, must be true if we're going to say that uh, a function is continuous at a given point x equals c on that function. Let's talk about this. Um, so I'm just going to really highlight all three must be true. Otherwise, the function is discontinuous. And depending upon which of the three rules it breaks, uh, we could have our different discontinuities. Thinking back to last lesson, it could be a hole, it could be a vertical asymptote, or it could be a step or a jump, depending upon which of the three rules this is breaking. Number one. State whether the function f of x, uh, which is equal to this piecewise function, is continuous at the given x values. Justify your answers. Now, again, we have this whole piecewise function. We're saying here that f of x is all of this. A reminder on how we read these piecewise functions, right? These over here are telling us parts of our domain. So this is saying that for all, all x values, when x is less than negative 1, we're going to use this rule, the x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then in our next line, this is saying, hey, if x is between negative 1 and 2, and it equals negative 1, then you use the second rule, which is x plus 2. And then for any x values that are greater than or equal to 2, we use our third rule, which is 2x. Now, if we think about uh, part A, they're asking us, uh, is x you know, is this continuous at x equals negative 1, if we're going to gonna do this, and, and we're going to need to talk about our three uh, rules for continuity, right? If it's continuous, we should be able to say all three of these things are true. And if something is discontinuous, we're going to want to point out which of these is false. 
And so this is very much a lesson uh, in practice for the AP exam. Uh, very frequently on the AP exam, at least one question is going to ask, is a function continuous? And you're going to need to know the definition of continuity, right? We're going to need to know the three things that need to be true, and we're going to need to be able to talk about them with respect to a problem. So what does this look like? Well, in this case, what we might notice is since there's x is equal to negative 1, the two parts of our domain here for a piecewise function that involve negative 1 are our first two rules. So if we're thinking about our first, uh, our first definition of uh, formal de definition of continuity, we need to know that f of c exists, or f of negative 1 is going to exist. Well, if we're going to find f of negative 1, we would need to use this second equation because this x value is equal to the negative 1. And so in that case, we plug into that second rule and we're going to say that negative 1 plus 2 is equal to positive 1. So I know that f of negative 1 is equal to, to 1 and it exists. So that's good. That's the first rule. Uh, we're good on the first rule. And I'll even put here on the side, that's rule 1 that we're talking about here. Now let's talk about rule 2. If the limit is going to exist here, we know that the limit from the left and the limit from the right would need to go to the same y value. So we need to check in this problem, do those limits go to the same y value? So if I do the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side of f of x, that's going to be values that are less than negative 1, right? If we're coming from the left, those are values less than negative 1, which means I'm going to need to use this first equation because these are values that are less than negative 1. And so if I do that, we can do our direct substitution here, and we can say that negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 1 is going to give us 1 plus 2 plus 1, which appears to be 4. And that's going to be our limit from the left. What about our limit from the right? Well, if we do the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side, well, in this case, from the right, we're going to need to be using values that are, that are bigger than negative 1, uh, and so in this case, we're going to be using our second rule, which is that x plus 2. And so we're going to do uh, negative 1 plus 2, which gives us an output of 1. What do I notice? Well, I notice that the limit from the left was 4, and I notice that the limit from the right is equal to 1. What does that mean? Well, that means that the overall limit does not exist. So I know, because of this, that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x does not exist. And so because of that, this breaks the second rule of continuity. So this function cannot be continuous. I know, so so, in conclusion, I'm going to actually sort of write in conclusion, f of x is discontinuous at x equals negative 1. So thinking about my conclusion for this, I'm taking the information that I've got here and I'm sort of writing a formal statement here at the end saying what I know. I know, hey, the limit does not exist and so because of that, this thing has to be discontinuous. And can, again, why? We had set up here that all three of these things must be true, right? If any one of them is not true, if any one of them is false, then the function is going to be discontinuous. All right, let's try B. In B... We are now talking about uh, x is equal to 2. And so we notice here uh, for our function that uh, if we, I'm going to erase what we've got here. We notice here for our function, the parts that deal with x equals 2 is going to be uh, these two pieces. Um, and so we're looking at these two functions now. Now, if we're going through our rules of continuity, our first rule of continuity is asking, does the point exist? And so for that first rule, we're going to use uh, x is greater than or equal to 2 because we want the part that's equal to. And so in that case, uh, f of 2 would be equal to 2 raised to the 2 power, which is going to be 4. Okay, it exists. That's good. Let's move on to our second rule. Does the limit exist? Again, we need to check is the limit from the left equal to the limit from the right. Let's do that pretty quickly. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, that's going to be our uh, equation right here because that's the values that are less than 2. Um, that's going to be equal to, 
looks like 2 plus 2, which is going to be equal to 4 for that limit from the left. If we do the limit from the right, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of f of x, that's going to be uh, our second equation here. That's going to be 2 raised to the 2 power again, which is 4. Okay, what do I notice? Well, both of these things are the same. So because those two are equal to each other, the limit from the left and the limit from the right, I know that the overall limit, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, is also equal to 4. Now, that gets our first rule and our second rule done. Both of those are ready to go. Our third rule is now, is the function value f of c equal to the limit as x approaches c? Our function value was 4, which we can see right here. And we see that the limit we found was 4 as well. And so my conclusion statement for this, for, uh, for this problem, is we're going to say, so since f of 4, or f of 2 rather, is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, and I could say, hey, both of those things are equal to 4, the function f of x is continuous at x equals 2. This is my conclusion statement. And again, this is an AP quality level response. We're talking about, you know, how do we respond saying, you know, the, what does this response say? We're, we're showing that we know the three rules for continuity as we do this. And we're saying not only do we know the three rules for continuity, but we know what that, what that tells us. What's the conclusion for this? And so each of these parts in support of this answer are really important if we're going to get full points on the AP exam for a problem like this. As we go through the practice, I encourage you to try to uh, make sure that you're showing your work, showing and practicing that you know those three parts of the formal definition of continuity, and then writing those conclusion statements. All right, number two, identify the type of discontinuities, and, if any, and where they occur. Let's jump into this. So if it's going to be continuous, we would need to know, uh, well, we would need to know the point where these two functions meet up. Specifically, it looks like uh, x equals 4 would be the, the place where these uh, might have a discontinuity. We would need to know that f of 4 exists. So what is f of 4? Well, when x is equal to 4, we use our second equation. So this is 4 over 2 minus 1, which would be 2 minus 1, which would be 1. Nice. It exists. So our first part of the, uh, of the definition of continuity is good. Now we need to move on to our limits part. Well, does the limit as x approaches 4 from the left uh, equal the limit as x approaches 4 from the right? Well, from the left, we're going to use values that are less than 4. So that is going to be equal to 3 times 4 plus 1, which is 13. And then from the right, we would say that the limit as x approaches 4 from the right, that's going to be our second equation, because those are values that are greater than 4. Uh, that's going to be, it looks like, 4 over 2 minus 1, which again is 1. I notice that both of these things are not equal to each other. So the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x does not exist, which means it breaks the second rule of continuity. Our second rule got broken. And so what does that mean? That means that uh, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not at the same y value. They're at different y values. They're not meeting each other. This is actually going to tell me that this is going to be... Uh, so there is a... So f of x has a step or jump discontinuity. And it's going to be at, at x equals 4. So this is my conclusion. f of x has a step or jump discontinuity. You don't have to write both of those. Those have the same meaning. They're synonyms in this case. Uh, I'm saying both because uh, different textbooks say them different ways, and you might have a preferred way. But th those mean the same thing, step or jump discontinuity or skip all three of those would be the same uh, in this case. All right, for number three, uh, let's get to our next problem. We notice that all of these are involving negative one. And so the question is, is this function continuous at negative one? Well, let's take a look. Our first rule, uh, what is f of negative one? Does it exist? 
Well, when, I, when x is negative 1, our output is 5. Good, that's a good start. Number 2, does the limit exist? Well, does the limit exist as x approaches negative 1 from the left? In that case, we're going to use uh, values that are less than negative 1. So that's that top equation. And so that's going to be uh, equal to negative 1 quantity squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. And that looks like that's going to be 1 minus 2 minus 1. That's going to give us negative 2 uh, for that output. For our second uh, part of the limit, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side, the values that are bigger than negative 1 are going to give us that equation. So that's going to be equal to negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Hey, these things are equal to each other. That's a good sign. And so we know that overall the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, since these are equal to each other and they're the same value, it's going to equal the overall limit, which is negative 2. So that limit exists. So our first rule and our second rule are good to go. Third rule, does the limit equal the actual value? Well, one of these is 5 and the other is negative 2. Those are not the same, so this is going to break our third rule of continuity. And so, again, I would say here, uh, let me super zoom in. So since uh, f of negative 1 is not equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, there is a discontinuity. at x equals negative 1. Uh, what type of discontinuity is this? Well, the limit exists and the point exists. In this case, this is going to be uh, a hole. Uh, if we were to think about this graph, uh, cases where the point exists and the limit exists, but they're not the same. So that would be a hole if we're thinking about our types of discontinuities from yesterday. All right, last one for today, problem number four. Let h be the function defined by h of x is equal to this given piecewise function all over here. What value of k would make h continuous? Well, if this is going to be continuous, again, going back to that definition, we know that the point would need to exist. And so we know that, uh, well, we know that looking at these x values, uh, the only way that it's going to be continuous is if it's uh, continuous at x equals negative 2. So h of negative 2, uh, if we plug into that top equation where it's equal to, we see that that is 2 uh, minus negative 2 quantity squared. So 2 minus 4 is going to give us negative 2. If the limit is going to exist, the limit from the left and the limit from the right would need to equal each other. And so the work for this problem actually is we're going to set these two equations equal to each other. I would need, if the limit from the left and the limit from the right are going to be, uh, are going to be the same, I would need their outputs to be equal. So I'm going to say 2 minus x squared is going to have to equal whatever 4x plus k is. And where, when is it going to need to be equal? Well, it's going to need to be equal when x is negative 2. So I'm going to worry about when x is equal to negative 2 here. And I'm going to substitute that in. 2 minus negative 2 squared is equal to 4 times negative 2 plus whatever k has to be. So 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 8 plus k. So negative 2 is equal to negative 8 plus k. That means that k has to be equal to 6. If our, uh, if our k value is 6, then that's going to mean that the limit is going to exist. And then not only is the limit going to exist, but we're going to get uh, it equal to this output for negative 2. So that would be our answer for this problem. That's going to be the value of k that's going to make this continuous. And that's all we need to do for this type of problem. Um, and that's it for today's notes. We've got some practice problems. Uh, please try those out and check your answers before going on to the mastery check for today. Reach out if you've got any questions, come to class, come to office hours, and have a great rest of your day.